All right, we are good. I'm just going to share my screen because back in the day, I actually did these PowerPoints for every team call. And I don't know why I kind of just stopped doing it. But tonight I was like, you know what? Let me just do a little bit of a thing um, just so I could have all my thoughts together. Because if you guys don't notice, sometimes my brain's kind of all scattered, especially a little bit later at night. So tonight um, we have Amanda doing our team call and she was actually gracious enough to kind of jump in at the last moment. We had a guest speaker and they couldn't do it. But Amanda kind of stepped into the leadership role and said she was going to um, talk about long-term mindset and looking, you know, at the long term and not just always looking kind of like short term about, you know, what you're going to be getting today versus where are you going to be in a year or two years? Um, so before Amanda talks, I just wanted to let you guys know about this training. I think I already posted about this in the team page, but this is an amazing, amazing book. Um, Melanie Meacher, the top coach in Beachbody, brought this all up to us in the wall. The wall is like a, a private um, like group on Facebook for the five star and above. So Melanie said that she was reading this book. I think it was like in November and everyone went out and got this book and it's absolutely amazing. I read it on the way to the leadership training event in November um, and somehow the New Jersey Market Council got the author to do a private group just for Beachbody coaches and it's running for obviously 12 weeks so the book is called the 12 week year and he's doing a 12 week training with just a hundred Beachbody coaches where he's going to walk us through this book. Um, we get to kind of work pretty closely with him. He's doing like weekly calls with us. There's a private Facebook group that goes along with this group. And then he also has like a membership for like his kind of online site for the 12 week year that we can like put our goals in, track where we're at and kind of use the system that he teaches, teaches in the book. And that's um, $99, which is like, really amazing because I think the membership alone, like if you don't do it with Beachbody is like 400 bucks, something crazy. Um, so we're getting to personally work with him and he's going to kind of help match the 12 week year with kind of like Beachbody realm and like terminology. Um, the last day to register is March 3rd. So this Friday, um, I would say like, if you are pretty sure you want to do this, um, Obviously, like anytime you're spending money, whether it's $10, $99, $99, this is an investment in yourself. So you kind of have to look and, and say to yourself, all right, like this is a legit business. If you are going to open up like a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts, you would be putting in a lot more into your investment. But this investment is actually an investment in yourself. So yeah, it's going to improve your business, but it's also going to improve yourself and improve just like, because you can use this whole week year for any kind of like goal setting, whether it's for your business, your relationships, um, you know, your finances, whatever, like it can be used for everything. So the cost is only $99. Um, but be, be, be serious. Like when you do any training, whether it's the 12 week year training, or you're doing a Facebook ad training, or you're doing a Josh Coates training, like be serious about it. Like if you're going to go all in, like go all in and just focus on this or just focus on um, your Josh Coates training or your Facebook ad training. Because if you try and do too many trainings at once, your head can kind of spin and explode. And when you're trying to do more than a couple things, you, you kind of scatter brain yourself and you don't do anything anywhere because you're so pulled apart. So if you don't have anything going on and you want to do this training, um, I'll post the link again in the team page so you guys can sign up. I'm signed up for this. Um, next Super Saturday is April 8th. If you're a brand new coach and you're like, what the heck is Super Saturday? Normally, I preach about Super Saturdays every team call. And for some reason, just like these PowerPoint presentations, I kind of let it go by the wayside. But I'm going to be back on top of this because going to events is what built my business. If I did not go to events, if I was not surrounded by Beachbody coaches at least once a month, I probably would have quit because I would have said, this is hard. I'm not seeing anything happen, you know, and all the other BS that we try to tell ourselves why we're not good at this and why we should quit coaching. Um, so a super Saturday is Beachbody's quarterly event that they hold pretty much like in every region of the area. I know places like North Dakota, um, where Alicia's at, you kind of have to travel. I travel 
you know, probably about an hour and a half, two hours anyways, just because I'm in a weird spot in New Jersey. Um, but Super Saturdays are held every quarter. So there's January, April, I believe. The one in the summer, they're going to skip because we have Summit in New Orleans. And then after that, I think is um, October. But anyways, next one, put it on your calendar, April 8th. It's still more than a month away. So hopefully you don't have anything scheduled. Schedule this, right? Um, especially if you really do want to build this business, you have to put skin in the game. You have to show up to things. Um, so for New Jersey, the author of Girl Code, this is a book I haven't read. Um, Jessica Bryson went on live today, and I thought the book that she was reading, that author was coming, but no, this author is coming. But I hear that this is a really good book too. Um, the book that Jessica Bryson was talking uh, about was You Are That Girl, which is an awesome book, which you should read too. Um, but this is New Jersey's Super Saturday, which I'll be attending. It's April 8th. Um, I'm not sure of the time. I'm pretty sure eh, it's probably maybe like 11 noon is usually when they typically have it. But if you're not from New Jersey and you're like, where can I find a Super Saturday? Go into your coach online office. On the upper right hand tab, there is training and then click on events and then you can search your area, put your zip code and it will tell you where the closest Super Saturday to you will be. You might have to wait a few weeks. It's probably a little bit early, um, but I would say like the bigger areas like, you know, Philly and New Jersey will have their stuff out. Um, but just go and look and, and sign up as soon as you can and make sure that you get to a Super Saturday. I have not missed a single Super Saturday in four years, even on the Saturday when I was moving. I still went. Okay, last event that I will mention. I know there's kind of a lot, but this one just got announced today, and I'm kind of really not supposed to leak this out to the entire team, but I'm going to anyways, because I'm allowed to. Um, Jeff Hill is the, what is he for Beachbody? He's the president of sales, sorry. <laughs> he's not the CEO, but he's the president of sales. So if you ever listen to the National Wake Up Call, which I hope you guys are all listening to the National Wake Up Call, he's the voice that you hear. He is like a freaking smart man and you want to be around him. So he's doing a training for only 100 Beachbody coaches in New Jersey next Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. in Old Bridge. So yes, I'll be traveling two hours to go to this event. It's actually like right down the road from my mom's house, so I'll probably stay there. But anyone that wants to travel up north with me, more than welcome to hop in my car. Sorry, guys, if you're not from Jersey. Um, but if you do want to travel, I'm traveling too. This is only 10 bucks. And like Jeff never ever does these events. And really to see him for 10 bucks and pretty much be like on a one-on-one -on -one with him. I mean, 100 coaches is really not a lot of coaches if you've ever been to a Super Saturday. Um, this one's going to be different. This one is going to be all about leadership. So they're kind of just rolling this out to diamonds and above tonight. But if those hundred spots don't get filled, it's gonna be released to everybody. So that's why I'm just letting everyone know now, because I know our team is mainly based in New Jersey. If you're not doing anything next Friday and there's spots available tomorrow, you better jump on this if you're serious. All right, besides events, <laughs> I wanted all of us to laugh at my, I always get the freeze frame video that's absolutely awful, like where my eyes bug out, but I just wanted to say thanks to all you guys yesterday. So Courtney, Diana, Amanda, Haley, Lisa, Danielle, you guys freaking rocked our coach opportunity call last night. A lot of you guys, I, I saw that you guys were on there supporting them, inviting people to, to the event invite. Um, they did an amazing job just rocking it. Um, like I can't do these events, like the coach opportunity. I mean, I could do it without you guys, but like it would suck to be honest because each one of them brought something different to the table. And I know like after, it was like 10.30 when, it, maybe 9.30 last night when it ended. And we were all like on a super duper high because you just kind of feel that energy from everyone. So I just want to say thanks to everyone that spoke and to all of you that showed up and invited people um, to the Coach Opportunity event. And then lastly, we have Coach of the Week. And I know I haven't been um, right on key every single week with 
having a coach of the week, but um, we're going to do a better job of having a coach of the week, just announcing someone that we've kind of seen that has been successful, whether it is, you know, success club related or not, or just someone that's posting a lot or whatever, someone that's doing um, a great job that's, you know, kind of like a new coach. Um, Erica Martin is our coach of the week. So just watch out for her videos because it's always great to just learn from someone different because sometimes, you know, like Jessica did an amazing video today. You can always learn just a little piece that you can take with you and hopefully apply to your business. And I think that's it for the PowerPoint. I know I kind of talked way too much. I didn't want to, um, but I'm going to hand it over to Amanda. I don't think I really need to announce her. Um, Amanda is a freaking rock star coach on our team. I think she's been a coach for almost two years. Um, you can correct me, um, but Amanda, like last night, she always brings it with those live videos. People connect to her and connect to her story so much. Um, she is really just a great piece of our team. So thanks, Amanda, for doing this last minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for giving me the opportunity, right? Yeah. Even if you feel like it's a little scary, that's okay. You should do those things anyway. Um, so I am going to talk, there's going to be a theme about long-term that we'll get to, but um, I'm going to talk about a few different things tonight. I'm going to share um, a little bit about my journey, a um, few things that I've learned along the way, um, particularly for people who are just getting started or who maybe feel a little bit stalled out. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about mindset and why that's so important for um, your business evolving over time. So I'll start with why I got started on this journey to begin with, and that's because I felt like crap. <clears throat> so for any of you who tuned in last night to the coach webinar, um, I shared that too, <laughs> because usually there's like a tipping point, right? Like you probably all experienced that your challengers that are joining you. They're at that point where they just know that something has to give right. Enough is enough. Something's got to change. And so here they are looking for a solution and where that solution. So uh, when I got started, I was at my heaviest. I was nearly um, to the weight that I was when I was about to give birth, which I'm telling you, like you don't feel small when you're about to give birth and you especially don't feel small when you don't have a baby in there and you're almost at that same weight. And so I just knew that that's not what I wanted. Like I knew that, um, I didn't want to be out of breath walking up a flight of stairs and I wanted to be able to chase after my kids when they were walking and running and and that just it, it's not the kind of mom I wanted to be it's not the kind of wife I wanted to be it's not the kind of person I wanted to be even just for myself right um, so I got the 21 day fix and I tackled food first um, and kind of I knew and that always has been and continues to be you know the biggest issue I have is my relationship with food and um, so I wanted to start with that and see if I could get that underway because it can be a little bit overwhelming to um, you know kind of adopt a whole new way of thinking about food and portion control and you know as you're educating yourself on how much of the right things to have there's a little bit of a learning curve and sometimes now that I get it I forget that for my challengers so I always try to remind myself of that you know don't forget to be where they are in their journey and if that's the very very beginning you have to help them through the very beginning so that they don't feel overwhelmed so <clears throat> I had some really good success with the 21 day fix and I was feeling really good <laughs> and I lost like a bunch, I don't know, like 15 pounds and 17 inches or something crazy in my first round and uh, was kind of blown away. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, well, maybe those people on the infomercials and that are actually working for those results. It's not just like magic. <laughs> and um, so that's, I think, the point where I was like, you know, I feel really good. and. Um, when I was first asked to coach, I was like, no, I'm not going to do that, but thanks for asking. But kind of over a little bit of time, I couldn't help but to share 
what I was doing. So I really started coaching because I wanted that personal accountability. And I knew that if I were helping other people do it, it would help keep me on track. And I also knew that I had finally found something that I felt could be sustainable. And if it was going to work for me, it was going to work for other people. So why wouldn't I share that? Um, I make that sound easy. That was not easy for me in the beginning, particularly with my very first post that I put out there. I like took a deep breath, hit send and shut my phone off <laughs> because I was terrified of, you know, what people were going to think, you know, like, oh my gosh, another coach, uh, or, you know, who does she think she is putting these pictures out on the internet? And, you know, I just ran through all of those scenarios in my mind. And in retrospect, which came very quickly, right? Like it was kind of immediate gratification that when I turned my phone back on, I was like overwhelmed by this complete outpouring of support and all these people who were just, you know, cheering me on. And, and I didn't expect that. And, and I think that, you know, that's probably not, not, that's not unique to me, right? But I think that's something that as our new coaches, are kind of overcoming that hurdle of putting themselves out there and being vulnerable for the very first time, we have to remember that that's kind of a scary thing, right? And, um, and that it's going to be okay, you know, that it's totally worth sharing, because that's how people are going to identify with you. So I started coaching because, because I like to help people. And I really like conversation. And I like working with people on things like this. And so I'm like, okay, here we go, all in. And that was about a year and a half ago. And there have definitely been a few moments along the way where I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like a lot of them, actually. But that's what we get to learn. And that's why we have this group. Um, but I remember this, sto this time, this moment um, that really, I think, kind of solidified my why for me. And I don't think I've ever shared this. So this will be new information for people. But I've got, um, so I'm married. I work full time. I have two little kids. They're four and three. They're just 17 months apart. Um, and so things feel a little hectic sometimes. And you know, there, there was this one day where I remember um, having to take my son Cooper to the doctor. And I think it was like his two year checkup, like something just totally standard because he was going back to school, daycare, we call it school, um, after that checkup. And he just, he did not want to go back to school. Like we were kind of at a new daycare. He like, I don't know, he, he is a super picky eater, you know, like for as much as we all talk about food, I'm like, how come, like, if anybody has the magic for like getting your kids to eat food, like that's, that'd be cool. You can share that with me later. Um, but I remember dropping him back off at school and he was sitting at those little tiny tables with these little tiny chairs and he had a little cup of milk and a roll on his plate because he was like, just so sad that he had to go back to school. So he sat in that little chair and he put his little head down and he just sobbed. He just cried and he's like, mama, I don't want you to go. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like how am I gonna leave this little kid who is like literally crying into his roll and his milk. And I like sat with him and tried to calm him down and he just was like inconsolable for a minute. And I'm gonna tell you like that moment was when I was like, no way do I want to miss these opportunities for any longer than is like financially necessary for our family. Like I can't, like, and I still so, it like makes me tear up. I still so vividly see him with his little head down and he was just like, mama, where are you going? And I'm like, buddy, like, I don't want to go either. <laughs> this sucks. And that's that moment when I'm like, wow, you know, we've got this opportunity, opportunity in coaching where we can help keep ourselves accountable. We can help other people and I can have the freedom to never have to leave him at school <laughs> again when he is not feeling his best. And I mean, eventually he's going to be like in elementary school. It's not going to be an optional thing, but that was just one of many moments, right? Like I want to be able to volunteer in a classroom. I want to be home when my kids get home from school and I want to be there when I feel like they need me the most. And, and as a working mom, like that's just not what it is. Like you are constantly in this battle of, you know, feeling like you have these responsibilities to your family and these responsibilities to your job and you know, how do you choose? And sometimes it's just literally impossible. So I don't want to have to choose. 
I don't want to have to choose. I want to have um, a job where I don't have to, where I can be home with my family. So that's my why. And it's a really strong why. And it's going to keep me going until I am home with my kids all the time. And, you know, it's funny because when I think back on it, when I think back on, you know, saying no to coaching, I mean, I think we all wish we would have started sooner, right? And there were times along the way that I feel like I've been like super impatient about like my progress and, you know, why haven't I hit this milestone or, you know, why am I not attracting the, the people that I want to be attracting? And, and so here's a few things I'm going to transition into a few things that I've learned along the way. So first and foremost, you have to get ready to work on you. I'm telling you, like, man, you go to get on one of these journeys and you start unpacking some baggage that you didn't even realize you had <laughs> to begin with. So personal development, while incredibly um, life-changing, man, you got to dig in sometimes and you have to be real honest with yourself. And you kind of um, have this really safe opportunity to expose your faults to you um, and to work on those. So get ready to work on you, right? Like I think that's something that we're all consistently doing and we have to be consistently doing because as we grow and change, our businesses will grow and change. Um, so things that I, I keep going back to as well, and I have this written like in my notes all the time, like right on the front page of my notes, is to be vulnerable, to be real, and to be authentic. Um, I probably don't need to unpack those too, too much, but it's scary. It's scary. I was nervous when, when Leia was like, hey, Amanda, you want to do the team call tonight? I was like, no, but yes, I do. <laughs> but what am I going to tell, to, you know, what am I going to share with people? So this is what you get. Um, but that's what it is, right? I'm going to put myself out there and hope that you find something, one nugget that's helpful in this little outline that I've shared today. Um, because that's real, right? Like, we're all busy. We all have things. And, you know, as we're sharing, people see right through it. And I think that the authenticity piece is the, it's the primary piece that sets Beachbody coaches apart from every other MLM that's out there. And, you know, not to say that all of those people doing that are fake or don't have great goals like they do, but it's through our story. It's through our genuine desire to help others. Um, it's through those pieces that make us us, right? Uniquely us. Um, those are the things that people are going to relate to. So you don't have to try to be somebody else in this journey or, you know, look at other coaches or compare yourself to other coaches because, you know, while there are things that we can duplicate or, you know, we might see somebody else's post and we're like, oh, I really like how they said that. I'm going to, you know, make note of that. Um, you still have to make it your own because if you don't, people see right through that. So the next piece is setting your intentions. And, you know, as we're at the last day of the month, and I know that we are all working really hard to, you know, wrap up those conversations and get those challenge packs in if you're not at Success Club, um, I think it's just a good reminder that our intentions have to be in the right place because sometimes we're going to hit that and sometimes we're not. And we're always going to aim for it, right? Like, and I'm going to talk about what we have to do to aim for that and to work toward that. Um, but it's, it's not about points, right? At the end of the day, like you have to be attracting the right people. Those people have to be in the right place to get started so that you're not setting them up for failure. And so just the intention piece, I think is really important. Ah, uh, failing forward. That's a big one too, right? Like nobody wants to suck at anything. I don't want to suck at anything <laughs> ever. And it is like my downfall sometimes because I try to like, perfect things and it has to be the right time in the right way with the right things and and it doesn't it doesn't have to be perfect all the time you have to be willing to just put yourself out there like for the amount of time that we spend sitting back and thinking about what we want to do we could have tried three things found one thing that failed and two things that worked so you can't hold yourself back with that. You just have to put it out there. And, you know, and one thing that kind of gives me comfort in that is I'm like, okay, well, if it sucks, not everybody's going to see it on Facebook anyway, because you, it's such a small population of people that actually see what you post. Um, I know that's maybe not the thing that we should focus on, but it does actually, I'm like, okay, well, if it, it's too bad, like, that's okay. It's not going to like, affect that many people. Um, but if you get that right thing, right, that's when you're going to blow it up. And like, you're going to have all these people who are like, yes, I get that. I, I res that resonates with me. I'm in. 
Um, and that's what you want to find. You want, you need to get through those things that don't work to find the things that do. And then the last thing is be efficient. And um, for this section anyway, um, but be efficient, right? Like we talked in one of our trainings about our, um, I just call it my checklist, right? There's a fancier name for it, but like, what are the things that I have to do every single day um, to make sure that I'm getting my vital behaviors and to make sure that I'm reaching out and starting conversations with people, to make sure that I'm adding friends every day and to get all of those things done in the power hour that we talk about, you have to have a list and you, you can't just scroll through Facebook because what a time trap. Like I would think that I'd be over that part by now that I wouldn't be like stuck in the Facebook scroll and I still get stuck with that sometimes. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, a half an hour has gone by. And that's like a half hour I could have spent like talking to people or reaching out to people or adding friends. So, you know, being efficient with your time, I think is really important. And I think there's a certain level of discipline that I know I'm constantly working on to make sure that I'm being efficient with my time and not just spinning my wheels. So there's a reason I think that the people are inefficient with their time sometimes. And I'm gonna talk about that in this next little piece. So I wanna get into the mindset piece because we are so our own worst enemies sometimes. And you know, for me right now, like I, I've had a couple of rough months to be perfectly honest in my business. And, and I think that's okay. I've just made peace with it and I'm changing things up and I'm doing some training to make sure that like, like clearly something's different right now. So that means that I need to change my game again and see what's going to work now. Um, so I'm just letting my business evolve at this point. And it has been such an opportunity for growth for me. And I really needed that right now. And I think that um, it's kind of recentered me and it's refocused me and it's helped me get back to the basics. And when I say that, I think it would have been very easy for me to just be like, all right, it's not working, I'm done. But there are people out there who are already depending on me and there are people out there who have yet to find this opportunity that I can still help. So I'm not done. I'm just changing things up a little bit. And that's because I have the long term in mind, right? My why is so strong that like this, this blip where I'm like struggling a little bit is not going to define my entire beach body career, the, the trajectory of my business, because I know that it's just one moment, right? And I'm going to work hard to make sure that's, that changes. So I had to take a step back and I had to simplify. And what I had to do that in my own health journey because I felt like I was just stuck. Like I felt like I was stuck on every single level. I was stuck in my business. I was stuck on my own health journey. And so I went right back to the basics because they are the building blocks, right? So what did I do? I got the 21 day fix back out and I got my containers back out and I started writing down every freaking thing I was eating. And you want to know what happened? The scale started moving. Right. I mean, that's not hard. Like we all know that, but over time, you know, a year and maybe a year and three months into this journey, I'm like, I've got this, right? I don't have this. this. That's why they call it a journey. I don't have any of this. I have to keep working on it because I'm not to my goal. I'm not where I want to be um, with my own health journey and I'm not where I want to be in my business. So you know what else I did at that same time? I got my freaking checklist back out and I started making friends. Yep, I started making friends. And isn't that fun? And I've made some new friends and they're so great. I really like them. <laughs> so that's been really fun. Um, but I had to go back to the beginning and I had to simplify because I think we get caught up in, is this the right picture? Is that the right quote? Does my cover photo look okay? I really don't know about these Facebook ads. Who cares, right? Like that doesn't matter because if you're not doing the basics, the rest of that stuff doesn't matter at all. Whew. So with that, I have balance and peace on here, and I find that sometimes whew, there's, there are so many things that I want to do, and there are so many ideas that I have that I have to like rein myself in a little bit and, and stick to those basics so I don't like go off on these wild goose chases, right? Like I just literally don't have enough time in the day right now. In the future, I will. But I just don't have enough time to do all of those things. So I have to really focus in on the things that are going to move my business forward. The end, 
right? And so what are those things, right? Like I have to be doing my vital behaviors. Like does everybody have, like, I'm gonna show you this thing. I'm not gonna show you the top part, but here's my notebook. And like right at the bottom, like those are the vital behaviors because sometimes I'm like, one, two, three, what's that fourth one? <laughs> like we all, we all know them, but we have to be proof that the product works. So go back to the basics. We have to be inviting, so go make some friends. We have to be recognizing people. So who are we celebrating? And that's actually something that, um, even though I'm kind of unprepared for today, it's something that I'm starting to plot out on my social media calendar that I've set for myself. So that instead of like hitting Tuesday and being like, oh crap, I have so many great people, but I haven't reached out to them. Maybe I'll do it next week. I'm going to set those up for the whole month now so that I can just drop them in and be excited with these people and their crazy, awesome changes that they are making. And then personal development. Like that is the thing that, um, I think coming into coaching, I think we kind of all have that moment. Like, does it really matter? Do I really need to be on the wake up call? Um, do I really need to listen to that or whatever? And that is the thing that has helped me help others. It's helped me help me. Um, and even now I'm reading, um, listening to Made to Crave on the way to work every day. And I love that book. And it's just, you know, especially for somebody who has struggled always with their relationship with food, this is just a new perspective. And I know it's helped me think about things in a different way. And I know that I'm going to be um, going into my challenge group next month, being able to share this valuable content that I'm pulling out of this. And if that's going to help them too, then I'm adding value to them, to the service that I'm providing to them as a coach. So that personal development piece, right? Like those four vital behaviors, that is the core. So things build over time. This is not something that happens overnight. Uh, I haven't figured out and everybody does a really good job with how they share their beach body income. But you know, I added a zero to what I made from beach body this year, which is incredible, right? So like in those hard moments, what if I had stopped, right? I wouldn't have added a zero to my income at work. Absolutely not. Like, I understand that in the long term, this has value. And it's something that is so incredibly meaningful to people, right? Like, this is their life. This is the core. And I keep going back to, like, I want to help people live their best life. The end. Whatever that means for them, like, I hope that I can share tools, share motivation, you know, and encourage them along the way because sometimes it's hard and sometimes we stumble and we need somebody to remind us that we had it in our, we had it in us the whole time, right? So we're empowering people to make these decisions for themselves because we certainly can't do it for them. So I'm going to leave you with a little story <laughs> and then I, I'm going to stop talking. Um, but I was listening to, go figure, I was listening to this like CD, um, this lecture that a friend of mine gave me. And I've heard this story before because I feel like it must have been like a TED talk or a video that I saw on the internet or something. But you've probably heard the story about the science experiment with the rocks, right? So, and if you haven't, I'm going to tell you what it is. So have no fear. So there was the science teacher who was up in front of his class and he had um, this jar, right? Like this big jar sitting on the desk. And then he had a jar next to it of rocks. And he's like, and he's like, okay, so, and there were rocks and there were pebbles and there was sand and there was water. And he's like, so do you think that we can fit all of these things into this jar? And of course, everybody's like, no way. Like, there's no way that those four jars of things are going to fit into that one jar that's like, you know, not too much bigger than the other ones. And so he's like, okay. So he puts all the big rocks in the jar. And he's like, wow, you know, okay, so the jar looks full, right? Are we going to be able to fit these other things into this jar? And the students are like, no way. Like, there's, it's already full. There's no way those pebbles are going to fit into that jar that already has rocks in it. And so he proceeds to dump all the pebbles into the jar with the big rocks, right? And guess what? They fit. Who knew? He knew. We knew. We know where this is going. So then he's like, okay, do you think we can fit the sand in the jar? And the students are like catching on at this point. And so he dumps the sand in the jar. And guess what? 
it fits in around the big rocks and it fits in around the pebbles. And then all of a sudden this jar has rocks and pebbles and sand in it. And then he has this water and now this jar looks like it's gonna bust, right? Like it doesn't look like there is one more little teeny tiny space for anything else in the jar. And he dumps that big jar of water in there and guess what? It all fit. And so when we think about this and when I think about this in, in relation to my life, right? Like what are my big rocks? Like my big rocks are gonna be my family. My big rocks are gonna be my family. My big rocks are going to be my health and my challengers and all of that, right? But I know that if one thing, if my big rocks aren't in there first, there's not gonna be room for any of the rest of those things. And I think the same thing can be said for you know how we approach our, our beach body business. Like what are your big rocks? And I think about that as like the vital behaviors. Like if I'm not doing my vital behaviors. It doesn't matter what my cover photo looks like. It doesn't matter, you know, what any of those other pieces mean because they're not going to fit in in the right order. So you have to think about what are my big rocks in my life? What are my big rocks in my business? And you have to get those big rocks in that jar first and then just let everything else literally fill in the cracks, right? Because is everything beyond that is just icing on the cake. I shouldn't say that. It's like a frozen banana in your Shakeology. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm such a dork, I know. Um, so anyways, that's what I think about that. Um, and I think that anytime you're feeling overwhelmed with it, you have to just simplify and you have to get back, you know, to what those big rocks are so that you don't get totally overwhelmed by the little rocks. Hi, Ellie. <laughs> this is, hey, Ellie. So, so that's what I'm going to leave you with tonight. Um, I hope that's helpful. I hope that, you know, you can find some, you know, some grounding in that and some reset in that <laughs> like I have over the last um, you know month or so and um, thanks so much for, for having me on tonight Rose the end the end that was <laughs> awesome thanks Amanda and I was just thinking did you guys actually see the PowerPoint thing that I pulled up or did I not share my screen I was just thinking halfway and I was like crap was I were they just like staring at me talking there was an actual PowerPoint. I just didn't share my screen. But like Amanda was saying, fail forward. <laughs> and I love that you said that because I was listening to Audible today. I always just kind of like put on random personal development, even if I'm just like driving to the grocery store. Oh, okay. So I was listening to Relentless from Good to Great by Tim Grover. And he's actually a personal trainer for like, I think it was Michael Jordan. So he talks, he kind of like relates a lot of it to um, sports, but it, it's definitely kind of like relatable to this. But anyways, he was talking about, um, you know, there's people that are going to want to be perfect, that are going to want to get things right, and that are going to take time thinking things over like, are my posts fine? Are my pictures good? Am I looking okay in this one? Let me take 500 more selfies and waste 20 more minutes. Yes, I've done that too. Um, or there's going to be people that say screw it and just do it, fail forward and learn and are going to be 20 times ahead of the person that just kind of wanted to be perfect and kept on thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. Um, so that's what I got from this call is that we always have to say like, screw it. Who cares? Fail forward. Just do it. If you're going to, you're going to make mistakes, like do a whole presentation and it not show. Um, but thankfully it wasn't for like an audience of a thousand people. <laughs> it was only you guys. So I don't care. Not that I don't care, but you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that is what I got from tonight's call. So thanks, Amanda. Um, did anyone else have any questions, comments? I did want to show you guys really quick what I was laughing about. Ah, oh, you know what? Let me pull it up really quick. But Jessica, did you have any um, comments that you wanted to add in? I see your pretty face and I just wanted to call on you. You're so sweet. My pretty face. 
without makeup and a tired mom look. Is that my, my pretty face these days? <laughs> Your hair looks like gorgeous, so. Thanks. Yeah. A natural curl. This is what it looks like when you shower and just let it dry. Because <laughs> I actually got a shower today. <laughs> yes. No, I just, I, I'll say kind of to piggyback, I can't talk too loud because Ev's asleep right upstairs and she could probably hear me, but um, just like the importance of personal development, it's something I seriously neglected and Amanda talked about it and I neglected it because I found the excuse of not being able to figure out when I can read um, and I don't do well with like auditory processing. I can't listen to something and actually comprehend. Like I need to see it, read it and underline it and highlight it and put it on a post-it note. Like that's me. So I know I need a book, but, um, just the other day I was kind of, Amanda was saying too, like you find yourself in these deep, dark places of coaching where you're not really sure if this is the right path that you're supposed to be on or if you can really cut it or if you're meant to be there. And so I was, I said it in my video today, if you get a chance to watch it, I rambled about it really. But, um, you know, I just talked about how when you put out to the universe, like what you need to hear, what you need to see to kind of answer the questions that you're having internally, um, you know, truthfully, this book found me and it couldn't have been more perfect timing and wording and so I think that that's just such an important thing and an ode to personal development because truthfully I felt like I was at a standstill um, as a coach as you know a person there's a lot of um, daily uh, challenges that come with being a stay-at-home mom who's really really gunning for the big hairy scary goal of possibly you know not having to go back to work and I started letting myself think it wasn't possible. And, you know, it's those thoughts that you have are powerful. And if you can kind of um, use what you're reading or, or use scripture or use anything that will speak to you and answer your questions that you're putting out to the universe, you know, that's where you're going to find it is in personal development, whether it's through a book that you're listening to, um, through prayer, through meditation. I think it's just so important to, to just remember that piece. Did that make sense? I, mean, I think I just started talking. I don't know. No, no, it totally made sense. Okay. And really, if people don't know you, Jess, like Jessica, you are like the one person that I would say that would be leaving their job. Like you are leaving your job. Like you are made for this. I am that girl. You are that girl. I'm that girl. <laughs> like, like, this was the PowerPoint that I was talking to if I was just like, blankly looking into the screen this is a 12 week year training that's a personal development book this is girl code this chick's coming to super saturday in new jersey april 8th this is jeff hill for the leadership event this coming friday march 10th from 7 to 9 p.m in Oldbridge, new jersey and then this is what i was laughing about all of our videos to thank everyone for last night and they always freeze frame me in like this awkward ass position but i think it pretty funny and then there's Erica for coach of the week so I did actually do it <laughs> anyone else have any questions comments that they wanted to add to tonight question <laughs> you don't know what's right <laughs> <laughs> we're back in school no question um for super saturday for new jersey do we should we do the vip um is it for um like to meet with her and stuff I don't know I that's why I didn't know what the if it was just like preferred seating up front or um I, I would say it's going to be like a meet and greet with her with the author okay yeah yeah i'll be there early so okay yeah okay thank you welcome Haley. did you want to add anything yeah um i was just gonna say amanda i love how funny you are like with yourself I crack on myself all the time I'm glad I'm not the only one that does that but I definitely agree that what you talked about and like getting in those ruts you know like that's kind of what my transformation post was about tonight like you know sometimes we feel like we're on this high and then all of a sudden it's just like one thing happens and you're like I suck. <laughs> like everything goes wrong and it's like, no, no, it's just like one thing you got to get out of that mindset of like, 
it's everything goes wrong. Like you might have a bad five minutes out of your day, but your day's not ruined. You know, like that kind of mindset that you were talking about today in your call. And that was just, that's what I needed to hear. So you did a great job. If I could just add something to that. <laughs> um, I was talking to my Tony Robbins coach today and she was referring back to when we went to um, Unleash the Power Within, when me and Leah went in, what was it, November. And she said, like, when Tony has, like, something happens or, like, you know, he's in a bad mood or, like, something goes wrong, he gives himself 30 seconds to, like, feel it, to be in it, and then get over it and not let it, like, ruin the rest of his day. Because I don't know what it was yesterday, like, just like got me in like a bad mood and I just like couldn't get myself out of it. So I was asking her like, what, what could I use? What could I, Oh, I know. I was like thinking too much at night <laughs> and I couldn't fall asleep. So I was like writing things down of like what I was thinking about so I could like put it to rest. And, um, she said to just, if like you find yourself focusing so much on like what went wrong on negativity, like, to change your mindset really quick is think of three things that you're grateful for. And that will always, like you can't be in a bad mood and be grateful at the same time. Like those two things can't coincide at the same time. So I thought that was really helpful is just think of three things that you're grateful for, whether it's your family or that you had a really great dinner or that you made some peanut butter cups and you can eat them and they fit for your yellow containers. Yay! <laughs> All right, everyone. Any last questions, comments to add? All right. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, next Tuesday, same time, same place. We'll see you then.